Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight, checking out my brand new installation of the new release from the Antics and Mepis communities called MX14. It's brand new. Let's check out and see what you get. First off on the bar we have a clock at the top, we have a vertical panel, good for you folks with widescreen monitors. Double clicking on the calendar gets you the calendar, double clicking on the clock rather gets you a calendar. Coming down the clock, this is the uh, running the area for running apps. Next down is the Cupzilla web browser, settings manager. You get an app notifier that tells you when updates are available. You get a little flag here telling you what language settings, your, I believe that's your keyboard settings you have. You have network manager for wire, running your wireless networks. You have a volume control and a power manager. You got a logout shutdown button two uh, workspaces, let's workspace switcher, and of course the whisker menu. So in the whisker menu you have a few things set up here in favorites. Uh, you got your file manager, LibreOffice is there. This is the full LibreOffice minus the database so you get spreadsheets, presentations, word, uh, word processing documents, drawing, all, all that good stuff. Cupzilla is the web browser. So let's run Cupzilla. Let's see what we get. The first time you run Cupzilla, you're going to get the MX14 Quick Start Guide. And what this is, is our documentation. So you'll be checking out, you've got the Quick Start, it gives you uh, tips and tricks on working the panel, uh, different things you might not be, it, uh, it's meant for someone who's new to XFCE and Debian desktops. All the documentation is here for you to check out, and it's very handy. This is your first place you want to look if you've got a question about MX. Coming down, we'll show you the app notifier. The app notifier is pretty cool. The update notifier. It's going to be asked for, uh, you know what, that if you click on it, you're going to get synaptic, and that's what I was about to do, but what I want to show you is on the right-click menu. And you click view and upgrade and it's going to give you a list of everything that's about to be updated. Okay, we got a lot of uh, stuff being updated here. If we decide we want to up, up, update, upgrade, we can click the upgrade button and you're off to the races. I'm not going to do that right now while I'm recording. <coughs> the volume key, you can use your, uh, if you have a touchpad or a wheel mouse, you can scroll the volume up and down. To, uh, on my laptop, I've got two finger swiping. We'll run the volume up and down, so that's pretty cool. You got the uh, XFCE Power Manager. All right, let's go into the menu again. This is the Whisker menu, which is pretty cool in and of itself because you can search for things. For instance, if I want to check out the MX user, the MX apps, if I type MX, I'm going to hit a list real quick of all the MX apps all together. We've already seen App Notifier. Uh, check, app, uh, check app GPG is uh, a handy utility for tracking down those keys that you may not have. You see, I have all my keys are are uh, good to go. Also, MX Codex Installer, which I'm not going to run, but like I say, it's going to download uh, LibDVS and some Windows 32 Codex. MX Flash Manager is an interesting app. This is going to allow us to manage our flash installation. And what it's going to say, right now I have flash pre-installed on MX14. However, it's not a free program. If you don't want to use it, remove it and click OK. Or you can update it and it will try to update flash. Or you can reinstall flash and you actually get some uh, additional options for installing the non-SSE2 flash. Now if you don't know what that means, if you've got a really old piece of, uh, a really old CPU, uh, the latest and greatest flash will sometimes fail on it. Um, uh, it this will help you roll back to an earlier version of flash that will work. Very handy utility. MX Flash Manager, MX User Manager uh, is a great app for managing your users. If you want to add a user account, you can type it in right here. Click OK, new home folder be created, everything's done for you, lickety split.
that user will show up in the login on the login screen. If you need to delete an account, well, you can do that too. Just select the account from the list, click OK to delete the whole home directory. You've got some different repair options for fixing uh, fixing accounts that might be broken, to re restoring the default group memberships, copy and syncing in case you need to make one a new user equal an old user. You can do that here. Added removing groups to a an user, handy in particular if you need to add yourself to the virtual box users group, VBox users, or if you need to um, oh, add yourself to the LP admin group, although in MX14 you're added there by default. And also uh, uh, you can check what groups your user is a member of and click and just, just check off which ones you want to add and subtract. It's pretty handy. It's actually, until you haven't had that app, you don't realize how handy a user app like that is until you're ready, until you need it. Okay, so coming down here, Recently Used is going to show you a list of the applications you've used lately. All gives you everything. I'm going to go by panel. So accessories, what you get? You get the application finder. This is the XFCE application finder. Pretty standard archive manager's file roller. You get a bulk renamer, catfish for searches. Calculator for all your calculator needs, Leafpad for text editor. Live USB is a great app for making persistent live USB devices. Uh, thank you, NetBootin, but particular to Antics and to MX. Lucky Backup is a backup utility. Meta Package Installer is a great app. This is where we promise the one stop, one click installs of easy pro uh, of popular programs. So let's say you don't like Cupzilla as your default web browser. That's understandable. I'm a Chrome and Chromezilla or Chromium and Firefox fan myself. Well you click over here on the browser tab, check, check, whatever ones you want, click install, and the meta package installer does the rest. It knows where to go to get what you want. We've got a lot of neat uh, apps in here. You can feel free to sort them out. One that I want to point out that a lot of people have problems installing sometime is Netflix. And we have both the Pipelight player, and if you just want something to work straight away, we have Netflix. This isn't going out to some Ubuntu PPA. This is actually hosted in the Mepis, Mepis Community Repository, the Mepis Community Repo. And uh, this thing is set up for Mepis MX and I hope Antics, which I'll be trying soon. Uh, this is great. One click, and the next thing you know, Netflix is installed. Really handy uh, application, this this meta package installer. This is a great way if you're doing a reinstall or doing a fresh install to get a bunch of apps you want in a hurry. Uh, you can click click what you need, and down they come. If you're a Space FM fan, hey, Space FM's there for you. You won't get you, Devil, but you do get Space FM. Okay, so that's a meta package installer. Let's go back to accessories. We're going to scroll down. Midnight Commander for your file management from the com from the console. It's here for you. You get the uh, the global clock, uh, root terminal. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, a screenshot app for taking screenshots. You get some cool games, Chromium BSU, the Space Shooter. This game's a lot of fun. I don't know if you can hear the sound but it's kind of a hoot to play. It's going to be slow at the moment while I'm uh, recording. We've also got a breakout game for you breakout fans out there. A Sudoku game and a GoTet which is more or less Tetris. Graphics, we got the LibreOffice Draw. Mirage is a really fast graphics viewer and simple scan for scanning. Under internet, we've got Claws Mail for your email needs, transmission for your bit torrenting. You got a chat client and Cupzilla for your web browser. Under multimedia, we've got Clementine for playing your music files. This is a great app. It will handle both internet music sources and your online on your your on system library. There we go. This is the first time I've run, this is a fresh install, the first time you run some of these things that has to build certain database. You can see I don't have any music on this machine right now. But it's got a whole slew of internet uh, uh, internet music sources uh, configured by default. It's all here for you. Really nice application. 
stays open in your tray over here if you want it to. You can control it from the tray app. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Also, a multimeter VLC for your audio, other audio video needs. Simple screen recorder I is available for the Mepis community repository. Uh, it'll be available in Synaptic by default. Uh, I installed it. It's not part of the base install. XF Burn and MiniTube. MiniTube is kind of a neat little app for accessing YouTube. Uh, with the dolphin. Let's see if I come up. Hey, look there. There's Run with the Dolphin. Plays right in the window. Under Office, you've got the LibreOffice. You've also got QPDFU, which is a great app, and a PDF Shuffler, uh, which is an app for merging, rearranging, splitting, manipulating PDF files. Under Settings, you've got some interesting settings. We've got Flash Player settings, Appearance for customizing, we've got Disk Manager for helping you manage your internal. Uh, disk drives like your hard drives. If you got multiple partitions on a drive this will help you uh, configure different settings for them. Gparted for your partitioning needs. Grub Customizer if you want to take a hand at customizing your boot menus. Uh, Ice-T for uh, I believe this is a Java control panel. Not real up on my uh, Java but uh, it is there. All sorts of settings. Mouse touchpad. A lot of these are, just st are the standard XFCE settings applications. Synaptic for packages. If you uh, if, if what you want is not in the meta package installer, the full Synaptic is here, and it works great. Under system, we've got Bleachbit for cleaning up your system. GDebbie for uh, installing packages you might download from the internet. Say if you're a Dropbox fan. Uh, HTOP for showing your system processes. And you can see I'm using 310 megabytes of RAM right now. However, I am recording, and I have found this simple uh, screen recorder uh, does eat up a little bit of RAM. This thing, when I'm not doing anything, just sitting here, uh, right after boots, running about 130, 145 megabytes of RAM, right around in there. Um, considering I got eight megabytes of eight gigabytes of RAM on this machine, this is hardly doing anything at all. Remember, all this CPU usage is because I'm recording and I'm encoding at the same time. Again, Midnight Commander, the bulk of the MX apps, some utilities to help you configure your printers. UNet Booten for creating. Uh, for creating uh, bootable USB keys. We also have Remaster Control Center which will help you, uh, this is more for running from a live environment, this will help you uh, remaster and, and set up persistence files on a live USB key. You can't really do anything with it from an installed system but if you boot from a live USB check that out because it will help you set up a persistence so that uh, when you boot from a USB all your favorite apps are available. We'll be doing separate videos on that. Get the snapshot for creating a bootable uh, ISO of your installed system. This works really great. Uh, I use it uh, quite a bit whenever I get a system set up just the way I want. I'll use the snapshot to create a bootable ISO. Then I'll use UNet Bootin or Annex to USB, the live USB utility, to burn it to, uh, to create a new USB key with it. This is a really great system. So that is what you get with MX. A lot of stuff and it fits on a CD. Can't believe it. It's absolute miracle as far as I'm concerned. So check it out. Head over to MX, head over to mepiscommunity.org/mx or put up a post at forum.mepiscommunity.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.